A lot of you watch HGTV and these house flipping reality TV shows. Over the last few years, I flipped personally over 200 or 300 houses, and my houses have never gone like they have on HGTV. So today, my team sent me some clips, and I'm gonna react to them and show you what's real and what's not real. So when I actually started doing things like looking at houses, analyze, running numbers, analyzing the properties, going out and making offers, talking to sellers, dealing with contractors, raising money, all the things that you need to do for this, I realized that it's not real. It's reality TV versus reality. And so what I wanna show you is reality and what we're gonna do today is just watch some of the clips. I've never seen these clips. My team set them up for me. I'm gonna watch them with you real time and I'll give you my reactions. All right, Bill. So in this episode, this is a house flipping team from Texas and they purchased this house for $5,000. And they this house is just completely run down and we've seen kind of houses like this before following Blaze and his journey. So that's kind of where the tip, this episode's gonna land and they're gonna talk about uh, prices on some of the uh, what's going to happen with uh, the house and also uh, uh, they do a little layout like a little plan of what they're going to do with each room okay so whenever you're ready let's hit play all right let's go i want to show you guys this initial tour as you can tell this thing is going to need some work so we're in brownwood texas that's like two and a half hours kind of north northwest of austin it's complete garbage it's falling down it's got mad code violations the city literally wants to demolish it but we are saving this house from the abyss we're going to bring it back to life so this is a three bed two bath 1100 square foot house uh, did we mention we bought it for five thousand dollars our strategy on this one's a little bit different we're actually going to keep the house and rent it out once we're done renovating Wow. Okay, so the first thing I see, there's a couple things here. It's a strange location. So I would wonder, do they know the comps? Do they know the values? It's two and a half hours away. Have they ever done business out there before? Code violations and it's on the demo list. A lot of times what we can do as house flippers is even though it's got code violations and it's on the demo list when we buy it, we can uh, fix it up and then renegotiate with the codes uh, department and get those now, I've never had some that are completely released, but I've had them massively reduced, like 80 or 90%. Um, but it's never guaranteed. So I'm always, anytime I run my numbers, I'm always thinking if I have $40,000 of code violations against this house, I might actually have to pay 40K. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know what? I could probably get this down to three to five. If we do a good job, all they want is the house fixed up. They don't really care about that money. It's really just to push the seller to fix up their house. So, and they're also renting it out. So when you rent a house out, you can pay a little bit more or you can, um, there, you have a longer period of time to make your money. You actually don't have to have massive returns on the margin to flip. So the ARV doesn't have to be really high. You're really looking for cash flow. So let's keep going. I don't know, I'm not sure what room this is. The renovation halfway done for you. You got materials that look like, like based on this faded Coke can are probably, I don't know, several years old. Like, look at this, look at this old insulation just piling up, just disgusting. Seriously, be careful where we're going in here because check this out. You can literally see through to the dirt on the ground. So this reminds me a lot of the house that we went to see out in Columbia that Blaze went through. It had like no floors, dirt everywhere. You could step right in, some soft spots, a lot of flooding that happened. Um, the other thing he talked about the materials. I think he was joking. So hopefully you guys got that. It was kind of sarcasm. Like they're probably gonna get all new materials, right? Although those do look like some of the accent sheets that they still sell at Lowe's and Home Depot. So let's keep going. Creepy bathroom. It's like a floating island of flooring. It's literally no baseboards around this whole thing oh my god actually see the ground through the house right there so there's a lot of foundation work to do here and flooring so let's see what they talk about god this is disgusting the choice is really what makes this house terrible welcome to your cat room this is the cat room here you have i think this is a bathroom and for some reason there's a big tub in the corner so the layout changes on this are pretty minimal so before he goes into layout changes, I'll just tell you like this is re this is real. Like all the stuff that you saw right there, these are the houses that we go into on a regular basis. You see stuff like this all the time. Uh, we bought a mobile home in Pensacola that I wholesaled to somebody else. It had a tree growing through the middle, giant hole with a tree growing through it. Um, it's a mobile home on land that we probably made ten or fifteen thousand dollars on. I think I bought it for thirty five hundred and sold it for close to twenty. So um, these are actually like houses that you can get for five grand, ten grand in some areas. Now if you're in California or some really expensive markets, five grand is not even going to pay for the. Per on the garage that you want to build. So we're adding a hallway between these two bedrooms at the back of the house to give them a little bit of separation. 
Next, we're stealing some of the square footage from the front bedroom in order to create a laundry room and add more value to the house. So we bought the property for $5,000 and we spent $93,000 on the renovation, bringing our total investment up to $98,000. Now that the house is fixed up, we believe it has a market value of... So I'm just gonna pause it right there. Here's, I'd say $93,000 in reno. I don't know that area, but that seems to be about right. I'd probably estimate just by looking at it. Look, I haven't looked at everything on the house, but everything needs to be run, redone. You can see from the roof, um, they're, they're moving the layout. They gotta do all new probably foundation work, probably plumbing, electrical, everything. Like new windows, air conditioning unit, all kinds of stuff like that. $93,000 seems realistic. Now here's where we get to. They're all in for 98K. There's a lot of numbers that don't go into that. When you buy a house for $5,000, there's a lot more that comes with it on the front end. You're paying all the closing costs, taxes, things like that. Um, on the front end, he also talked about the code violations and everything like that, so let's see if he goes into that. About $120,000. Our plan is to refinance the property with a loan for 75% of the property's value at a market interest rate of 4% for 30 years. That would give us a total loan of $90,000, leaving our cash invested in the property at $8,000. We'll list the house for rent for $1,100 per month. With a market value of $120,000, it's totally realistic that they could get a 75% loan to value on this property. Maybe 80% if they really pushed it, and sometimes 70% just depending on the bank. So definitely building bank relationships are really important, especially if you're using hard money or private money on the front, you wanna refinance that if you're gonna keep it. So now he's going into the rent. Um, he's, so he's gonna do some numbers probably at $1,100 at 12 months, right? We're at what is that? Maybe uh, twelve, thirteen thousand dollars a year, probably twelve grand a year. Um, I'm sorry, it's probably thirteen or fourteen thousand dollars a year. And now he's saying I have eight thousand dollars in the property, and I'm making twelve thousand dollars or thirteen thousand dollars a year. That's really great. So let's see what he talks about. Our principal interest, taxes, and insurance payments on the house will be six hundred and seventy-three dollars per month, and we're going to allocate two hundred and fifty dollars per month for vacancy and maintenance of the property. That would leave a monthly cash flow on the property of $177 per month, bringing our yearly cash on cash return to 26.5%. Okay, so this is where um, this is where things look really good, but I don't know if I totally agree with this. So vacancy and maintenance, I'd say that's a healthy budget for vacancy and maintenance. Uh, $250 a month is... Uh, is, is probably good. But what he's not including now is long-term maintenance, like capital expenses, and there's nothing in here that's talking about property management. So that $177 is gonna get eaten up pretty quick with property management fees, which are usually anywhere from 10 to 15% of the monthly rent, which would be you know another $110 to $150 a month. And then they're, they're usually property management is taking some sort of upfront fee to start working with you. This 26.5% cash on cash return is right. However, think about this. You did all this work, right? He did all this work. He's, he's into it for about $100,000. The property's worth $120,000. So he could make $20,000 today, minus all the fees and everything like that. So he's probably only making somewhere around, I don't know, 10K, maybe 8K if he sold it as a flip. Um, now running it out like this at $177 a month in cash flow, you're making somewhere around $2,000 a year, 2,200 on $8,000 invested. He really has more like I talked about. So the numbers are lower. Now, if you look at the return on equity, versus the return on cash, that's what I like to look at. And as this property builds up in equity, it's something that you need to think about of having a bunch of cash tied up into a property like this. Where this property is, is probably not gonna appreciate, appreciate a ton, and it probably should be a cash flowing investment, but still, it's probably only making $100 a month from a house like this. I personally would not do this deal to make $100 a month, even on $8,000. You did a lot of work to make two, $3,000 a year. It just doesn't make sense to me. I, I would pass on a deal like this. It's probably good for TV, but this is not something that I would be really excited about making 26% return on $8,000 for that amount of work and risk. $93,000 of rehab, I wanna be making a lot more money than that. I hope this was valuable for you. I actually really enjoyed it. I love running numbers. I love watching these kind of shows. I mean, I grew up on these shows, just like you. Like I got into real estate because of this. So if you're watching these shows and you want me to react to something, you enjoyed this, then in the comments below, just tell me what show, what kind of clip, those kind of things, or a TV show that you'd like us to grab a clip from and watch it, and I'll react to it and, and show you that. I'd love to see people in reality, not engulfed in reality TV.